Hello, hello, hello. Sorry for a two minute delay. Technologies, technologies, technologies. I hope I have my mic on me. Hello, hello, hello. Let me know if you can see me and you can hear me. And I'm live here on YouTube. And thank you so much for joining me today. Just leave me a comment if you can see me and you can hear me because last time we've had a few mistakes and today we are going to work together if you yes yes finally let me know where you're watching from i'm in south carolina just outside of greenville it's freezing cold and i'm actually like i can barely feel my fingers because it's so cold outside i'm just checking all the last things and if something i'm in my studio so we can always figure things out we are going to work together if you would like to and we are making wafer paper gardenias. Let me grab my flowers. And these are the beautiful gardenias that we are going to make together. And I think they need just a little bit more fancy things to add to them. So it depends if we will have time and see how it goes. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, my hair is crazy. It's crazy. Just <laughs> look at me. <laughs> A few years back when I started this YouTube channel, my hair was this short and I was like so long. Yeah, my hair is long. Um, I live in, in South Carolina. So things uh, change. Hello from India. Hello from South Africa. Hello, 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 hello. I'm so happy to be here. So a few things you need to know. This is going to be recorded. So if you cannot stay for the whole thing, it's okay. You can come back and watch it again and again and again. We will need our template. It's linked uh, here on YouTube and it's also available on my website. And I'll probably send you a thousand links because this is what we are going to use today to make our gardenias. If you do not have a template, I'll give you measurements for these flowers and you can just like cut them by hand because a few of my templates are hand cut like I have a few basic ones the one like how I started and for my V for paper flowers for every single V for paper flower I teach you how to make these are my own templates and I develop them so usually I just play with V for paper and see if I like it and see if I like the flower I'm making. And we'll start with V for paper, then talk about V for paper conditioner and how to cut, how to shape, how to do all the fun stuff. And basically you will need your V for paper, a pair of scissors, maybe a few basic tools and you can make your own flowers. These gardenias are beautiful and I love them because First of all, they're very easy to make and look at this sander. So we are going to do everything. I'm trying to hypnotize you, like, look at me. And <laughs> these are very easy to make and especially they look beautifully on wedding cakes. My camera is like, I have too much sunlight and we'll make little smaller flowers. So for wedding cakes, these are amazing because they are larger in size and they almost look like roses or um, gardenias, beautiful, beautiful textural flowers. I do have, I do, I am going to use a um, styrofoam bowl for my center, like a plastic little styrofoam bowl. But if you don't want it to, you can use a piece of paper, paper, crumble paper, paper, or you can use gum piece. I just find, especially because I teach how to make commercial grade flowers and how to make money with your wedding cakes or your cakes in general, and um, that's why I prefer to use styrofoam just to make it lightweight and to make it dry faster. This is 20 millimeters. So if you have, the name is um, cell, cell ball or cell center. So this is 20, 20 millimeters or less than an inch. I believe it's like seven eighth of an inch. So this is 20 millimeters. But something in that range would work for you today if you wanted to make these flowers. So these gardenias are a part of collaboration. I'm so happy to be here because I got invited by a beautiful group of ladies who are the Cake International and these, these flowers are a part of collaboration for inspired by Gabrielle Coco Chanel. I suppose to say it in that order. So it's inspired by Gabrielle Coco Chanel and 
all of my flowers or most of my flowers, wafer paper decorations, especially cake designs in general, they are inspired by beautiful wedding gowns or like wedding uh, dresses or inspired by fabrics and different designs. So I wanted to show you how to bring this element of wafer paper and turn it into flowers. So if you are at the Cake International, I'm very jealous, not jealous, but I'm very envy of you being there and I'm here on the other side of the world. So let's see what we are going to do. I have my top view. It's been a long time, but I finally figured out how my camera works. You will need your template and you will need your wafer paper. I have a thousand things around me. So for my wafer paper, I'm using uh, 0 0.27 millimeters. This is Saracina wafer paper, but any single thickness wafer paper would work for this application. Single thickness wafer paper means that one of the sides of your wafer paper is bumpy. You can see it's like it's very textural and the other side is smooth. So this is what I call the single thickness wafer paper because it's very flexible. There are other grades of wafer paper and you can find this information either on my YouTube channel or on my website floracakes.com and you can learn how to make different flowers using wafer paper. And if you're working with me, take your wafer paper, take your template and let's start with cutting our petals. With gardenias are very easy. I try different methods and I try different ways of making wafer paper gardenias, but the easiest way I found to make them is to cut six of each petal. What I do for my wafer paper, first of all, I prefer to use good sharp scissors. These are craft scissors. You can buy them at any craft stores where you can buy your like uh, scrub looking supplies. And for thin wafer paper, single thickness wafer paper, you can cut three layers at the same time. So all the time to save me some effort, I usually cut my wafer paper folded in three. And if you're drinking, because it's Saturday, I'm not judging, but if you're drinking, take a sip every single time, maybe you're drinking tea or coffee, take a sip every single time I say wafer paper, because I'm going to say that a thousand times today. So I'm going to cut my template and start with larger petal. And I know that I need to cut six. So it's very easy. I have my wafer paper folded and three layers. I'll place my petal and usually it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to save your wafer paper. And I usually cut my, like point my petal here on an angle to save as much wafer paper as possible. And I just cut around through all this layer. So I have three layers of wafer paper and my template. And remember, we need six of this, six of each petal. So usually I start with the larger one because then it will be way easier to fit my smaller petals. So for my smaller petals, I'll do the same. I roughly cut them out of my template like this and place them somewhere in here, trying to save as much wafer paper as possible. And I do save my wafer paper scrubs. I usually have my bowl with wafer paper scrubs here on the table because then I'm going to use that to make my wafer paper glue or to make any other decorations like wafer paper snow and maybe like velvet texture. So there are, even if you're going to make lace wafer paper lace, these scrubs are re not reusable, but very, very useful. So let's cut more of this. And uh, if you if you're drinking coffee, just like let me know what you're drinking. I I should have a bottle of water, and I think I forgot it in my kitchen, so I'm not drinking anything. But if something, I'll run to my kitchen and grab a bottle of water. Usually, when I'm talking, I don't have time to drink anything. So six small ones, six medium sized ones, and six large ones. I already have my petals pre-cut. At least I hope I do. So these are my medium sized petals, medium, large and small. And to texture or to vein our wafer paper today, I'm going to use my wafer paper conditioner. And why I'm using my wafer paper conditioner? Because 
it, it also depends on your humidity. So for me, my humidity is 39%. So it's relatively dry in here because I have my heater on. It's cold. I need to heat up my house. So it's relatively cold in here. I have my heater on and my humidity is very low. So using my conditioner, you can adjust it to work in a drier climate and in a more humid climate based on the amount of glycerin we are going to use. So for my vapor paper conditioner, I mix water and I mix food grade glycerin. You can use, it's sometimes it's called just like base glycerin here. This is Wilton. So this one you can find everywhere. Uh, I mix glycerin, food grade glycerin, uh, the other name would be uh, vegetable glycerin and you can buy off Amazon, you can buy it every, anywhere. If you cannot find, because there are some countries that where you cannot find food grade glycerin, specifically like glycerin made for food, you can stop by at your local pharmacy and ask for cosmetic grade glycerin. Nobody is going to eat our flowers, so it's not a big deal. And the recipe is in your class material. So here's the recipe for your wafer paper conditioner. And here, here's the recipe. So you can download your wafer paper template for gardenia and you will have the recipe for your conditioner. If you live in a dry climate, like I have right now, it's 39%, usually I just add a little bit more glycerin to my mixture. If my climate gets too humid, especially in the summer or when it rains, I add more water. One suggestion I'll give you for water, use um, uh, at least like filtered, preferably distilled or bottled water. I don't have my bottle, I, I should have shown you. But because if you're going to use tap water or even like if even if you're going to use cooled down boiled water, sometimes it contains too much salt and minerals and other uh, ingredients that might affect your vapor paper conditioner. So we'll start with our small petals. I'll leave them on my table. I have my palette where I'm going to mix my wafer paper conditioner because these wafer paper gardenias are white, like in a pure white color. I'm not going to add any color to my wafer paper conditioner, but we are going to do that later when we'll start working on our um, uh, leaves if we have time. So I will need for this application, I will need just a toothpick to shape my wafer paper and a brush to apply my wafer paper conditioner. Maybe a small bowl tool if you have it. If you don't, it's okay. We'll figure it out how to use it. Also, I have my foam pad. And the reason I have my foam pad because I wanted to have something like squishy to be able to uh, shape my wafer paper and shape my wafer paper petals for my flower. And the other thing I would need is something like a petal shaper or a foam to put it aside to dry. I prefer to use these plastic ones or you can use any like half sphere petal shapers or formers for your flowers just to give them some like a little bit of help when drying out. What else? And the cornstarch, obviously. If you never worked with wafer paper, the basic combination I use or my conditioning method for wafer paper is acetonic, uh, which is glycerin-based wafer paper conditioner, and cornstarch or cor corn flour, depends on where you are in the world. And I prefer to apply my cornstarch with a brush like just the tiniest amount possible. And usually I just prep my foam board with cornstarch and then I keep my brush here on the side. And I apply my acetonic with a brush because it gives me a little bit more control over the application. So I'll start with my first petal and I have six here because for our gardenias, we would need to have six petals. So for wafer paper, wafer paper basically has two sides. One side is single thickness wafer paper, has two sides. One side is a smooth side and the other side is a bumpy side. 
basically it depends on your personal preference if you wanted to use a bumpy side use bumpy side if you wanted to use a smooth side use smooth a smooth side for me if i work with vapor paper conditioner and i add any color to my vapor paper conditioner i prefer to use on a bumpy side because it gives me a little bit of texture i don't need to work for but if i wanted to apply any dry dust like petal dust or any powder color i prefer to work on a smooth side because my gardenias are white and they are just in a pure white color, I probably wanted to add a little bit more light green dust or something. So I will face, like today for this flower, I will face my smooth side up. So my smooth side of paper paper will be my face side. And to shape these flowers, we'll start with our small petals. And for our small petals, we are not going to do as much shaping. First thing, I will start in, use my vapor paper conditioner. So I have just a pure brush, clean brush with vapor paper conditioner. And I'm scraping my vapor paper conditioner on the side of my palette just to have a little bit of moisture, but not too much. So I'm not going to melt my vapor paper. And the four petal size like this, which is very small, I would apply my vapor paper conditioner on the petal holding it in my hands. So I'm applying my vapor paper conditioner, making sure that my petal is saturated enough. And because my climate is a little bit drier today, my vapor paper might need condition be need conditioner on both sides just because i'm in a drier climate if you are in the uk or somewhere in the world where your climate is very humid australia uh, or uk i know that uk is raining and it's humid usually then you can get away with applying your vapor paper conditioner only on one side and i'm not dipping my brush into my conditioner very often i'm just applying a little bit of moisture so it gets like glistening very soft very pleasant to work with but it's not melting and for a petal like this it's so much easier to do that with my hand or in my hands also you can put it in the palm of your hand if it's easier for you but i'm trying to be as efficient as possible and work as quick as possible so if i can manage doing things in my hand i prefer not to put things down just to save me some time and i'll bring my petals here and let's shape them to shape my petals i wanted to make sure that they are not sticky because if i'm going to apply any tool onto my petals they will stick to my tool so i'll take my cornstarch and just like the smallest amount possible even this might be a little bit too much and think about that you're when you're applying powder to your face or you're doing your makeup you don't want it too much powder you want it just a little to prevent you from like being shiny and all the other things that powders make for us and same for wafer paper. I just wanted to prevent my wafer paper petals from sticking to my tools. And all I wanted to do is to shape it. So I have all my petals bumpy side up here because this is going to be my inner side of my petals. And I wanted to cup them. And pointy side will be our bottom side. So pointy side of our petal will be the place where we are going to attach that to our flower. So I have here like my example. My little example for my center so i'll take my ball tool if you have a larger ball tool you prefer to work with larger tool or a smaller one just play around and see what you like but basically what i wanted to do is to, to give it just a little bit of shape and to make my wafer paper not so flat that's the only goal i have here but you can see because i use the combination of my wafer paper conditioner and cornstarch these petals are very flexible and very easy to shape it they take on a shape without any issues so they are not breaking nothing is happening it's very very well controlled and i understand how much pressure i can apply to shape this petal so what we are trying to do is to cup our petals and give it a little bit of love just a little bit of love but I wanted my petals to, I'm looking for a toothpick. I wanted my petals to be opening up from the center. So I wanted them to roll out on the side. I'll take all my petals. You can see all six of them are facing me, bumpy side up, and they all cup this side. So I'll start taking one by one, 
one of my petals and just giving that a little bit of love on one side so i'm giving it like this curly shape only on one side because when we are going to attach them all of this will make sense and i'm setting them upside down on my former to dry but i wanted to curl them on one side all at the same time while they are still very flexible but not sticky and you can play with different tools you can try using maybe your uh, brush handle or something for a flower like this for gardenias because they are so small i find that it's so much easier to use just a toothpick or something very thin so you have a beautiful shape on the side of your flower same goes if you're making vapor paper roses or any flowers and you need to give it some help in terms of shaping this is the easiest way to do that and we'll make all our petals first that's how i usually work with that's how i usually make my flowers is i make my all flower all petals first and then i assemble everything together just because it's easier it's so much fun to assemble a flower and it's uh, it is a smaller flower it's easy to assemble all together it's not going to take a long time to dry same let's work for our uh, on our medium sized petals so for my medium sized petals i'm going to do a little bit different type of shaping and i wanted to make it more flexible and more wavy and more interesting and let me see if you have any questions what uh, side of paper paper did you use i use bumpy side uh, so i conditioned on both sides and i'm going to sh show you this again but i wanted my shiny side to be facing me so when i will be shaping these ones this will be very obvious and um I don't speak any other languages so after forming you place bumpy side down on a former I place uh, yes so bumpy side down on a former that, that's correct so shiny side up on a former because this is going to be our face side for our flower because we shaped facing bumpy side up and turn this shape this angle and then bumpy side down on a former that's exactly correct and for my larger size or medium size petals i'm going to shape them three at the time as well but because they are larger i'm going to apply my v for paper conditioner on the table so i'm scraping my brush on the side of my palette and again because i know my humidity is so low and i have so many lights shining onto me my v for paper dries very quickly i will apply my v for paper conditioner on both sides just to give me a little bit extra time to play and again i'm taking my petals into my hands and playing around so i'm i'm squeezing v for paper conditioner into v for paper and setting it aside for a second before I can shape it. We're not going to use any veneers because for gardenias, if you Google v, not v, if you Google actual gardenias, they are the petals are very interesting shapes, and most of the time they're like so wavy and different and beautiful and very, very not symmetrical, let's put it that way and if you're just starting out and this is your first flower you're making with v for paper this is an easier way to get started because there is no wrong way to do that oh watching from london that's cool so you're not going to cake international i wish i can go there maybe next year and now because i have and you would need to do six i already have a few petals pre-made for this side so first thing i wanted to do before shaping my petals and before applying any cornstarch i wanted to cut them but because these flowers these petals are a little bit larger i'm going to cut a little slit here and cross it over so now i already have some shape onto my petal without doing any work yet so first thing is to shape them and same method i use for roses or peonies or larger petals where if you're going to apply your v for paper conditioner and then apply some pressure with ball tool or something you might damage your petals and my petals are facing soft uh, smooth side up 
my brain is getting tired so then i'll take my ball tool again take my petal make sure it's not sticky and i'm going to cop it and give it a little bit of the same shape as we did for our smaller petals but because these are larger i'm being a little bit more mindful of how much pressure i apply and same because we cut this part and we shape them with the conditioner they are very easy to work with if your wafer paper is not copyrighting so for example you get any tears or holes probably because you didn't condition that enough and you didn't give it enough time to uh, absorb this conditioner so now what I wanted to do is I'll take my toothpick again and this is shiny side up. So I wanted to shape my petals in a different ways. I'll start one side up, one side outward. So you can see I'm not doing, I'm not moving them the same side and I'll place them in a petal former or something, any former to give them to have this shape. And I'm not going to do them same way, all of them. I'll start maybe curling inwards, some outwards, just to give them a different shape, all of them. There is no right or wrong way to do that. Make them fun, make them looking cool and set them aside to dry. Same exact method for our large petals. And you will need to make six of your medium sized petals. For the large petals, because they are even larger, I'm going to do the same application. My V for paper conditioner on a brush. I have my petal on my table and I hold it very firmly with my one hand and apply my V for paper conditioner with the other hand. And I'm being very um, mindful about my speed and application of V for paper conditioner because I wanted to apply a very thin layer of V for paper conditioner without making my V for paper melting, but I still wanted it to make soft and flexible. So the faster you work in this application will be probably easier for you to understand how much moisture your petal needs because it's easier to add moisture to your V for paper petal when you're working with that than to subtract. Even though it depends on your humidity, you can be more generous with your cornstarch or you can skip using your cornstarch at all. If you're in a drier climate, you can see that I barely used any cornstarch and my petals are beautifully shaped and not sticky at all. If you are working with other flowers and you're making other flowers, not just gardenias, and you wanted to make them in different color, it probably will be easier for you to add color to your wafer paper conditioner. And you'll be able to see how much moisture you have on your petal. Again, before doing anything, I'm going to cut my petal and cup it first because it's sticky from wafer paper conditioner and I haven't applied any cornstarch. And my petals are smooth side up because this is going to be the face side of our petal. Again, I'm trying to cup them carefully and make them sticky and complete. Then I'll take just a thin layer of cornstarch to prevent my wafer paper from sticking because I can tell that my wafer paper is not going to melt. It's not enough moisture for it to melt but it might be a little bit stickier for my tools to grab onto that. And then same, same application. If you have a larger ball tool, you can try and play with the larger ball tool because it will give you a different shape for your petal. And usually the larger your petal, the larger tool you need to use. For me, it's just a little bit too much pressure I need to put onto my petals and I prefer to use the smaller one. For the large ones, we are going to shape them the same using our toothpick. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to curl all parts inwards. But some petals will get two curls like this one. Other petals might get one curl here in the middle, like the larger curl inwards. And you can use your ball tool if you wanted to give it like a different shape. You can run your ball tool just to make it fold a little bit but, and then use your toothpick to finish your design. Uh, my goal with these petals, with larger petals, is to make them curl inwards to uh, 
place on our flower later. Again, I'm going to place them on my petal former here. I have just a foam. You can use any shapers, spoons, half spheres, um, egg shapers. So these are my petals. And now is the fun part. Now we are going to make our center and assemble everything, everything together. So for my center and for working with paper, paper in general, I usually prefer to use 20 gauge wire for my stem for my flowers and 20 gauge 18 gauge depends on the size of the petal but in general vapor paper are so lightweight so you don't need to do any magic any extra effort and i prefer to use a heat glue gun let me grab mine just a basic glue gun to attach my wire to my vapor paper so i'll take a half of my 20 gauge wire and for the most part, especially if you're working, if you're making wedding flowers or you're working with flowers in a lighter shade, I prefer to use white wires. And if you just are out and you're thinking about like what tools do you need to have, I would suggest you to have 20 gauge wire for your stems, for every single stem for your flower, and maybe 26 gauge wire for your leaves. And you can use 26 gauge wire for your petals as well. So if you're just starting out, have 20 for your stems and 26 for your leaves and for your petals. I have my wires in every single color, every single color and every single side size just because I use them a lot. So basically what I do is I make a hook on top of my uh, 20 gauge wire. And then I take a styrofoam ball this is uh, 20 millimeters or 7 8 inch and i poke a hole i poke just a little hole on one side and then i add my hot glue and push my wire into my center so that that's that is how i make my centers and you can see when your hot glue dries it's not going to come off and this is the easiest way to make your centers for your flowers when you're making uh, peonies, when you're making ranunculuses, when you're making davidos and roses, like any flower. This is not going to come off and it's so lightweight and it saves you a lot of time and money in terms of making your centers out of gum piece or waiting for it to dry. I understand it's not edible. You can make it out of wafer paper as well. I have other tutorials. But if you're making commercial flowers and you wanted to make money, you need to save time. And this is like the best say time saving tip. Time saving tip I found. So I'm going to have my center here and I'll bring my petals, my small size petals. We will need six of them. And I'll start with my wafer paper glue. For my wafer paper glue, I have my wafer paper scrubs. And usually I collect my scrubs just in a box like this. And then I take my wafer paper scrubs at, at the water, regular water, same you use for your wafer paper conditioner. And I put it in a microwave in like five second increments, 10 second increments until it melts. So wafer paper glue is basically just melted wafer paper and it helps to stick wafer paper to wafer paper. And it helps to keep it like flexible for a long period of time because if you wanted to use gum glue or you wanted to use any other glues for that, sometimes it prevents your wafer paper from being very soft and flexible compared to using vapor paper glue. And you have the recipe, if you're going to download my workbook for this uh, masterclass, you'll have this too. So I'll start with my petals, and this is my shiny side, so I'm applying my vapor paper glue on the rough side. And I'm being relatively generous, I just wanted to assemble everything on my styrofoam, and I will apply my vapor paper glue to all of the six petals. And same wafer paper glue you can use if you need to fix your petal, if you need to just uh, make it flexible again and attach everything together. And then I'll start placing my petals. 
I wanted my curl to be at the top, so I'll start with my first petal being with my curly part here at the top and hugging my styrofoam ball like this, very gentle. And then I apply all of this on the right side of my first petal. So the second petal goes here. And I'm hugging my styrofoam ball the same, making sure that everything is sticking together. My third petal. And I'm looking at my center, I'm trying to close my center and I'm trying to make sure that that's what I'm keeping in mind, that my wafer paper will cover my styrofoam center as well. So my third petal, fourth and a few more. My fifth petal here. And same for gardenias. Look, look them up online, look them up on Google, and you will see that they are not as symmetrical as we, we might think. So don't stress very much about your placement and trying to find my present tool. You can use a toothpick. All I wanted to do is to help this petal, my last petal, to go under my first petal. So I have this complete spiral of paper, paper petals that closed here on the top. So this is going to be my center for my gardenia. I'm going to play around, make sure that all my petals are opening up. And you can see how easy it is to place them together and close them up and play around. So now if you have time, you can put it aside for, to dry for maybe five, 10 minutes. Depends if you have time. I have already have another one pre made, so I'll start assembling my medium sized petals. And then the, the previous one I'll use for, um, to make a, a smaller flower. Where do you find the styrofoam sanders? These are just styrofoam balls and I buy them off Amazon. Let me grab some for you. You can, you can buy a whole thing of styrofoam balls like this for maybe like $10. And these are different sizes. So the larger ones I use for David Austin roses. The medium size goes for regular roses or just basically Amazon. That, uh, that's the place you can buy your styrofoam bowl. They're very inexpensive and easy to use and I always have them on hand. So for my medium sized petals, I have six of them here. And I'll find the most beautiful ones. Sometimes I make more petals than I need and then I'm just picking the ones I wanted to. So I have six and I have my center. I'll do the same. So this is my first layer, this is my second layer, six petals. But I wanted to apply my petals in a very uh, not symmetrical way. I'll start with applying V for paper conditioner only here at the bottom of my petals. Making sure that I remember the order I applied my V for paper glue onto. So they all get the same amount of fluff. I'll start with my first one and I look at my center. So how I go about assembling flowers. I look at my center and I can tell that right here there is more space than any other places. So probably I wanted to apply two petals on this side just to offset my first layer. So I'm sticking my petal right here at the base and I wanted to give him a friend. So I'm going to apply my second petal like almost next to the first one, like that. Then I'll apply my third one, maybe a little bit further away. Again, my goal here is not to make my flower look symmetrical, but still look like a flower, still look like something that nature has created. And maybe two more on this side, next to each other. And then the third one, the last one, the sixth one, I wanted to put it in between these two, between my first one and between my fifth one. But I wanted to think whether I wanted to move it closer to the first one or closer to the fifth one, probably closer to the first one. So it's going to go right here. 
Okay, so now I have my first layer for my gardenias. All my petals are overlapping each other, same we did for our first layer. So they feel connected, they look connected, and they are flowing into each other. And if you wanted to set it upside down to dry for a few seconds, you can. Usually I just make a hook and hang on my lamp or somewhere on my table and I'll prepare my larger petals. So for my six large petals, I will do the same. I have six petals and you can see they all curl the same way, but beautifully open and easier to assemble and we'll do the same. So six, I have six, yes. And because we used vapor paper conditioner, you can see that these petals are still flexible, even though some of them I made a few days ago, but they still stay very flexible and easy to work with. I'll take my vapor paper glue and apply here at the bottom. Same, I'm just trying to make it sticky. I'm trying to make it melt for a little bit, for a few seconds before I'm going to stick it to my flower. And I'll take the same flower and look at this again. So now with my third layer, I'm trying to offset my first and second layer to make it not symmetrical, but symmetrical in a different way. So my third layer should be not symmetrical on its own, but it should be symmetrical to my second and first layer. So probably the first petal that needs to go, it needs to go up here because I have three on top and three, it looks like I have three on top and three on the bottom. And I'll start with my first larger petal going here. And then I'll continue going in the same direction. So I'm overlapping them and I'm sticking them here at the bottom where I have my vapor paper glue. And because I'm using styrofoam that's been glued to my wire with a hot glue, it's so much easier to assemble. I can press very firmly. Here I have two petals close to each other. So I will move my third one, third layer closer to the second one on the third layer and press it down. Then again, just different distances. So I'm doing the same method. I'm assembling my paddles in the same order, but I'm giving them different distances in between them. And the last one will go under my first one and over my fourth one, fifth one, like this, but probably closer to this side. I'm pressing firmly here at the bottom, making sure that my V for paper is stuck together. And that's it. You have your gardenias. <laughs> I know it looks easy and sounds easy, but it's actually very easy. If you wanted to give your V for paper gardenias a little bit more love and you wanted to give it a little bit more shape, what I use is little triangular foam things. And basically these are cosmetic sponges. You can find them everywhere. These cosmetic edges. I have thousands of them everywhere. These are just like cheap and expensive ones. You can buy them anywhere. And then I cut them in a little triangular pieces like this. So I can use them in between different layers of my flower. We have sun coming into our studio today, which is fun. And what I do, I take my flower and where I can see my petals are touching or being too close to each other. Usually I just place a little piece of foam in between different layers to give it more shape or give it a little bit more dimension to make it look more textural. Because when you're making wafer paper flowers and all your petals are same white color and same white, same shape, it's very hard to visually separate them. So now my flower is going to dry upside down in this shape, maybe a little one in here. And um, I'll turn it upside down like this and I will hang it to dry in maybe another 10-15 minutes with the foam parts inside just to make it look even fun. And while I have my sander that we just made, so it's still a little bit soft, but very, very workable. I'll take other petals I have. Usually when I make flowers, I have 
few leftover petals. This is the large one. These are three medium sized ones. And I put them on my table and see if I can make any uh, smaller flowers or buds or something. So I take my petals. I have three and maybe maybe like this. So I'll take my V for paper glue and start with smaller petals to make a smaller flower. And a smaller flower usually if you have an opportunity just use smaller petals. If you don't just um, use all the petals that you have on hand and assemble them together. So again I'm looking at my center and I'm looking where I have uh, larger gaps and I wanted to cover that with my petals. So I'll start here maybe two of them here for a smaller flower and one on this side just because i only have three petals in the medium size that's the reason why i'm using three just because i have three and i have four in a large size and i'll do the same i apply my v for paper conditioner and i never have any leftover petals i use them all for the most part and then I'll place them. These are the larger ones here. But you can see I'm trying to make it a little bit close up compared to the first one. And place more petals on one side compared to the other side to make it look like it's just blooming and this flower is not very, very full or like fully bloomed. Like this. So I'm just sticking my petals onto my flower and I'm not looking for symmetry. I'm not looking for my petals to be placed in the exact same spots because for flowers like gardenia or flowers like peony, there is no symmetry. If you're making a rose or you're making a ranunculus, yes, the symmetry will make, make a difference. But for gardenias, they usually look very, very free wheel if you wanted to put it that way and again I'm going to put it upside down I'm going to smoosh it a little bit to make it closed up because I wanted to have the difference in looks like uh, for example this one is very open and this one is very closed up even though we use the same petals and same size petals and the same method I'm just squishing it together like this and I'm going to hang it upside down to dry as well. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll do, we'll have another maybe 10 minutes and I'll show you how to make vapor paper leaves and we'll have our beautiful gardenias. It's been almost an hour, time flies and uh, I'm moving a bit fast. Oh, you'll have a chance to watch it back. I'm trying to teach you as many cool things as I can. But for my leaves, if you wanted to work with me and you wanted to make vapor paper leaves, we'll use vapor paper. For colors, I'm going to use gel colors. Not gel, these are airbrush colors. And airbrush colors, again, my V for paper conditioner, we will need another brush or you can use the same brush. I just want to prefer, want to use a different brush and I'm going to use a veneer. So if you're still working on your gardenias and you wanted to come back and watch how to make leaves layers, that's totally fine. I'm going to use this leaf veneer, which I got from someone. I don't even know what type of veneer this is, but I like it. And I'm going to use 26 gauge wire. So same as I told you in the beginning, you can have 20 for your stems and 26 for your leaves. And I think that that may be a little bit of cornstarch. So we can use this together. And like that, I'll cut a little piece of V for floral, floral wire. And for my vapor paper, I will need a single piece of vapor paper. And my sun, I don't know what to do that the sun is shining through my uh, window. Uh, just woke up. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's 2 p.m. here, but it's okay. We uh, time always passes quick uh, in your company. Oh, thank you, Violet. You are so sweet. You're always so sweet to me. Thank you. So for my leaves, I'll start with a piece of paper, paper like this. 
double thickness and I want my shiny side of paper paper be on top. You have a template, feel free to use a template. I'm not going to use a template for this application because for leaves it's just easier for me to cut free-handed. I'll take my brush and here I have a little bit of paper paper conditioner. So I'll start with the application of paper paper conditioner to wire my wafer paper. I'll apply a thin layer of wafer paper conditioner or you can use wafer paper glue or just water. I have my conditioner here so that's why I'm using that. I'll place my wire here in the middle like this and sandwich with a dry piece or the other piece of wafer paper. And I'll make sure I don't have any ear pockets, no, no bubbles, everything is stuck together very firmly, there is no wet spots, there is no dry spots. So this is my template for my leaves. I want my gardenia leaves to be skinnier and longer, so I'm going to cut it with my scissors on both sides. I'm freehanding, feel free to use the template. I find it's easier to cut it this way and then play around as I wanted to. Now I have my wafer paper wired and there's two layers of wafer paper. So for our leaves, this will work very, very nicely because we have enough density into our wafer paper to make a leaf which is going to be thinner, thicker in texture compared to our thin wafer paper petals. And for my colors, I have uh, airbrush color. This is forest green in airbrush. I like this color, but I do not like this color. Let me explain. It is a beautiful color. It is a beautiful dark shade of green color, but it's a little bit on the cooler side. So it's a little bit more on a, like a green blue shade. Do I have a piece of wafer paper to show you? Let me see. So this is just wafer paper conditioner with forest green color. So it's almost like blue, green, green, blue, not the perfect shade that I wanted to. And to adjust to that, to mute it down, to make it a little bit more expansive looking color, I have ivory and I always add ivory or I add black to all my colors when I'm mixing them because then it will make it even more beautiful, like more mature color when I mix it that with my forest green. I do the same for my reds, I do the same for any shades of uh, anything, like if I'm making pink colors, anything like that. So now my shade of green is a little bit more mature. You can probably cannot tell the difference, but I know that I might use a little bit more airbrush in here. Now I have my wafer paper conditioner mixed with two shades of airbrush color which is forest green and ivory and I'm going to scrape my brush as much as I can because it's a darker shade. I'm trying to be mindful about the amount of conditioner I have on my brush and I'll start with the back side. So this is the back side where my wire is a little bit more visible and I'm applying my wafer paper conditioner with the color as evenly as possible because every single dry spot will show uncolored wafer paper and I don't want that. So if you are just starting out, you can apply your wafer paper conditioner with the color on one side, let it dry and then apply on the other side. But you can see how shiny it is and it is relatively wet or well saturated and I'll do the same on my front side. And for this application for my leaves, I have shiny side of wafer paper up. So this is shiny side of wafer paper. So my brush glides very nicely and I'm making sure that my wafer paper leaf is fully covered in conditioner on all sides. And then I'll bring my foam pot and do the same. So I'll take my brush with cornstarch. But because it's a darker shade, and I still wanted to condition and shape my wafer paper leaf, because it's a darker shade, I'm going to be very mindful. All I need is to prevent my wafer paper from sticking into my mold. So I would rather apply cornstarch onto my mold and on my leaf as little as possible. 
because if you're going to apply a larger amount of cornstarch on your wafer paper it will be very visible and we don't want that so i'll take my vener i'll place my pedal into my vener and this is the back side so this is where the vein or the wafer paper uh, was wired on that side so i'm going to place it into my vener and press with another side of my vineyard and hold so if you work with sugar paste for sugar paste usually the more pressure you apply the bad impression you will get for wafer paper is the time so the longer you keep your wafer paper inside your vineyard the better impression you'll get so let's see and i can read your questions while i'm here uh, uh do you have to condition petals for the cherry blossoms as well uh it depends on what type of flower you're making i think i have a cherry blossom tutorial on my youtube channel so you can go back and watch that but now you can see all these impressions on our wafer paper leaf how beautiful it is if you have time you can leave your wafer paper dry inside your vineyard usually i don't because then i wanted to use it again for a different leaf so gently i'm going to press onto my vineyard and take my V for paper leaf out of my vineyard. And I have this imprint, I have this texture on both sides. And then I'm going to put it on a foam pad or something to give it more shape. And you can bend because we have our wire, remember? I can bend it a little bit and give it like a different texture and set it aside. It's not actually, a, it's way darker than the camera shows. It just like light picks up on this but you can see all these textures on my wafer paper and that's it now you have all these parts now you know how to make gardenias these are our little these are our large gardenias so when they're dry i usually just like shake them so you can see i shake them until all my foam things are out and this is our larger gardenias and this is our smaller ones so we made just in under an hour and i was talking a lot if i would be just working and making flowers i would make a dozen of this in an hour and they are very easy to make they're very lightweight and beautiful if you decide to add a little bit more panel dust or a different texture you can do that as well but wait for your wafer paper to dry completely if you wanted to dust that so i have a few flowers and leaves i made earlier you can see how beautiful they are when you're putting them together let me see like this all of these textures all of this like movement and i have two i have three large flowers and three smaller ones and out of a six flowers you can make a whole arrangement so this is enough like six is already enough to put on a cake on a wedding cake with your leaves and for something like this for wafer paper gardenias you can make six flowers in under an hour if you're not talking as much as i do so if you're just sitting down and you're making this beautiful textural gardenias you can make them in no time and in a different shape and a different sizes and i love them all i don't even know which one we did today but all these shapes are beautiful and i love them and if you have any questions leave me in the chat i'll stay here for maybe another 10 minutes to entertain you and if you wanted to download your template for this v for paper gardenias it's linked here on youtube this this template this workbook with uh, v for paper conditioner recipe and all of these things it's linked here on youtube or available on my website floriacakes.com and if you have any questions leave me in the chat my laptop is on the side that's why i'm like looking on the side and uh cherry blossoms uh, yes you can you can use vapor paper conditioner for cherry blossoms you can just like make little flowers depends on the size you wanted to make or you can use the same technique with just a toothpick and vapor paper conditioner you can play around and see what works for you but i teach how to use my method which is vapor paper conditioner glycerin based vapor paper conditioner and cornstarch and i find this is like gives me the best result especially in the long term let me grab my flowers so 
these are our flowers from the Viper Paper Academy. So these Davidson roses and all these beautiful flowers are from the Icelandic puppies, um, butterfly ranunculuses, sweet peas. These are from the Viper Paper Academy. So you can see these flowers are flexible and still soft and still very, very easy to assemble and put on a cake, especially if you wanted to keep them and make them like if you have downtime for example your wedding season is over and you don't have any more orders and you wanted to make vapor paper flowers dry them put them in a the storage they are beautiful and they store very well especially if you wanted to make them ahead for the next season and um, you're a vapor paper goddess oh thank you so much Thank you for your work and sharing with us. Thank you. The remedy is amazing. I didn't know the secret method. Yes, this is the secret method. It's not so secret. I think I'll been, I've been teaching this method for a long time since I developed that in 2020. So I started working with V4 people in 2017 and I started teaching this method in 2020. And the reason for that, because I lived in Florida and, and I started my business, wedding cake business in Florida, and it was 100% humidity and 100 degrees outside all year round. And either buttercream flowers or gum paste flowers or isomal, nothing can withstand the higher humidity the same way as reefer paper can. But I was looking for different ways how to make it flexible. And I don't use alcohol because I used to make a lot of uh, cakes for kids. So I always avoided using alcohol for anything, like for painting, for conditioning. And most people use vodka to condition vapor paper. I didn't like that method. So I started playing around, like starting learning about the chemistry of all the ingredients, like uh, glycerin is a humectant. That's the reason we are using that for a conditioner. And the cornstarch, so the combination of paper, paper conditioner and cornstarch, that's the method I developed uh, back in 2020. And that's what I teach since then. And uh, we'll share my work with you. Send me an email at hello at floriacakes.com. I would love to see your flowers. And is there a reason why you use the airbrush color instead of gel color, please? Yes, there is a reason because I only work with wafer paper. I don't make uh, gum paste flowers or any other flowers. And for wafer paper, I find that airbrush colors dilute within my wafer paper conditioner are easier compared to gel colors. So I do have gel colors and I do have other brands of airbrush colors or like different colors as well. And gel colors would work the same, but you, for me, it's like, uh, I have more control over airbrush colors when I'm diluting them into my V for paper conditioner compared to gel colors, because some gel colors, they get a little bit chunkier and it's hard to predict what saturation, like which shade of red I'll get when I'm diluting my gel colors into my wafer paper conditioner. And all my colors are the same. I work with the same palette because I only make wedding cakes. I have three, four basically colors, forest green, uh, ivory, maroon, and black. I only have four airbrush colors and I can mix any color for my palette if I wanted to. For example, for greens, I can use just straight forest green. I can use straight, I can use forest green plus ivory. I can use forest green plus black. I, use, I can use forest green plus maroon and it will give me four different shades. And within those shades, I can have different saturations, if that makes sense. So. I only have four colors. It works for me. And I always suggest everyone to, who is starting a business or having a business, especially wedding cake business, to stick to your palette, to have something you like and do the same. And even here, this is maroon color. This one is a little bit of ivory. This is a little bit of ivory and that's it. For my blue color, I only use clear V for paper conditioner and blue dust, blue petal dust. I don't even have a blue airbrush color. So these uh, centers that we made for our um, uh, ranunculuses, this is ivory color. So basically I only use the same colors over and over again for all of my flowers. It's so much easier for me to control. Um, I'm trying to catch up on your uh, comments. 
what I would like to spend a day with you to make flowers and learn even more. Yeah, Violet, you should come over here. You you know how to make paper, paper flowers. Now we just need to sit down together and have fun. And I would love to do that with you. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge. It's a great pleasure working with you. Thank you. You are so sweet. And you're using green or white floral tape to put the leaves on the gardenia. I use white. I always use white because green might be a little bit too dark. And sometimes green might be visible through wafer paper and I just don't like the look. So I always use white because you can color white uh, floral wire into any color. And same for floral tape. If you're asking about floral tape, I use lime green. The color is called lime green. Now it's dark outside. I live in South Carolina. It was like so shiny and bright. Now it's so dark. So the color for my floral tape is this one. It's called lime green or light green. And this is the color I use for all of my flowers, especially for wedding cakes. And floral tape. Yes, so lime green, this color. How do you cast flowers per hour? No, I'm not going to answer this question. Today. No, actually, there is a method to this madness. And go on my Instagram. I have a lot of information about how to price your cakes. And I do not price my cakes based on the cost per flower, but I price my cakes based on the complexity of the design. So there are different levels and I teach all of that on Instagram. And uh, my cake business bootcamp is coming back in December. And do you have a video tutorial on how to color the wafer paper flowers? Yes, I do. Here on my YouTube channel, there are plenty of hundred tutorials how to work with wafer paper, for sure. Which papers is good for flowers? And uh, either zero grid, which is 0 0.22 millimeters, or 80 grid, 0 0.27 millimeters. These are anything between 0 0.22 to 0 0.35 will work for wafer paper. So look for single thickness wafer paper. One side should be rough and the other side should be smooth and it will work for you perfectly. Thank you for your time. Oh, hey, buddy. Hello. I love these gardenias and making them for my wedding cakes. I think that these gardenias are beautiful flowers for wedding cakes, especially because of the time wise. They don't take so long to make, but you can see like even six flowers is a full size arrangement, which you can make within an hour, hour and a half. If you're just starting out, you can do that easily. Uh, I open your academy again. I missed the last deadline next year. Uh, Wafer Paper Academy is not going to come back until January next year. Unfortunately, because I wanted to do this a little bit differently this time. And everyone who is inside the Wafer Paper Academy, you're going to get an email and special invite because I wanted to include a few live classes for the Wafer Paper Academy students. So we can work together. We can have fun together. So it's going to be in January 2024. And you can go to my website. Uh, floriacakes.com and sign up for the waitlist so you will be the first one to know how to sign up for the for people academy and uh i i came in super late yes it will be it will be available here on youtube a little bit later today maybe tomorrow depends on how much time i have today what is the best way to color v for people before using and um I I I cut I cut my wafer paper straight, just like plain wafer paper, and then I color and condition and assemble this together because I find it will give you more control and understanding how much moisture you can apply with your wafer paper conditioner. And cutting plain wafer paper is so much easier because you can make any color, any flower, and you can pre-cut your petals way in advance. I use silhouette machine, and usually I cut my petals using my silhouette machine, and I just keep it in little bags. And I store it forever and ever and ever and ever. So thank you so much for being here with me. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. And maybe I'll be back next month or something. We'll see how it goes. And if you're looking for any information about working with wafer paper, designing wedding cakes, or learning how to build and grow your wedding cake business working from home, go to my website, floriacakes.com, and I'll see you somewhere